Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to this lecture uh, given by Olia Leolina. Um, my name is Rebecca and I'm the curator at Arbeit Gallery. We are a London-based organisation who support the development of artists working across digital and emerging art forms. Um, we also support multiple voices in digital culture across the UK and internationally to bring innovative perspectives to art through new technologies. Um, I'm here with Olia Leolina. Hi, Olia. Hi. So Olia is among the best known participants in the 90s net art scene. Her early work had a great impact on recognizing the internet as a medium for artistic expression and storytelling. And her continuous and close attention to internet architecture, net language and web vernacular has made her an important voice in contemporary art and new media theory. Olia is also a lecturer, researcher, archivist and GIF model among many other things. Um, so this lecture is part of our current exhibition with Olia called Best Effort Network. The exhibition comprises a series of new and remade works from 2013 to 2020. And we're showing Summer from 2013, Best Effort Network from 2015 and 2020, and also a new commission called Hosted from this year. Um, you can access all of these works on our website, so do make sure to check them out afterwards if you haven't done so already. Um, in this lecture, Olia will talk about her old and new works, as well as the importance of URLs or universal resource locators within her practice. Um, we'll be live streaming this to YouTube, as you can see, and we invite you to ask questions in the chat box. Um, I'll put some of these forward to Olia at the end of the lecture. Um, but if you have any problems using the chat box, then you can direct message me um, on our Instagram or Facebook as I'll be checking these as well. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I'll now pass over to Olia. Yeah, thank you very much, Rebecca, for your um, great introduction. And uh, thank you very much uh, Arbeit Gallery that um, you organized the show for me and that actually you did build the show though this were the uh, final hours before the lockdown and I still hope that um, actually there will be uh, the possibility for everybody to <clears throat> go to the gallery and to see it uh, because uh, I think we will be prolonging the show and uh, there will be chance in June. But if not, then uh, yes, there uh, actually all the things are online and what I'm showing to you was uh, um, originally produced to be uh, seen on the internet or even on the World Wide Web. Um, the uh, thing I would like to say to you some words about the title of the lecture, Her Majesty URL. Um, is uh, The lecture actually will be about the addresses um, that you see in the location bar of your um, browsers. And I will now start uh, to share um, my screen with you. It will be another tab. It will be actually another window. And uh, I hope you can uh, um, see it and you can indeed uh, read the URLs that I see. So there is a, a pad on profolia.org. So it's pad.profolia.org slash URL. Um, and uh, <clears throat> please uh, um, think that uh, it is uh, not uh, uh, I don't know my curriculum about URLs, or it is not an official history of uh, the way artists use um, URLs or um, anything um, that has uh, um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, like uh, written in stone. These are my notes uh, for the uh, for this lecture, and I'm also. I think you should also see my face here, and uh, I will click. Uh, I will click links, and uh, you are of course um, also welcome just to uh, open this uh, uh, document in another tab and click uh, links yourself. So um, you know, um, maybe some of you could 
uh, notice that um, in the description of um, this lecture, I made a mistake. Um, I wrote uh, then explaining what uh, um, uh, URL is. I wrote here Universal Resource Locator. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe nobody read it. Maybe people who read it are very polite and didn't uh, uh, write, uh, corrected me, or write something angry or sarcastic back to me. But um, <clears throat> of course, it is called uh, uh, Uniform Resource uh, Locator. At the same time, agree that the word universal is uh, nicer than the word uniform. And interestingly, uh, there almost an anecdote, but in fact, it's more than an anecdote. It's an important uh, um, fact from the past. It could be, have been that uh, we would say universal resource locators and not uniform. I have here um, a scan. It's a um, <clears throat> picture, one uh, page uh, uh, from the <clears throat> from the book that Tim Berners Lee um, wrote uh, in uh, 2000 when he decided to sort of to uh, re um, re rethink, recapitulate, and uh, reintroduce the first years of the uh, of his project of the World Wide Web. Uh, he, in the chapter Going Global, he recalls that. Um, uh, in fact, his proposal was to call this address <clears throat> uh, universal. And, uh, but there was a uh, big uh, resistance from, uh, um, uh, from the <clears throat> Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, and it was in 1992. And as he recalls it, how could I be so presumptuous as to define my creation as universal? Um, so it was, um, and another thing he wanted it to be called documents, not resources. Um, so that's why here is UD, and it has to be identificator and not location. But it's uh, actually another and more complicated story. But uh, <clears throat> let's uh, just stay with the universal and uniform. And uh, here, let me quote to you also from the uh, next page. I tried to explain at the session how important it was that the web uh, be seen as universal. But there was only so much time, and I decided not to waste my breath. I thought, what's a name? If it went through the standards process, and these people agreed, and all I needed was to call it uniform, as long as I got the right specs, that what was fine, that it was fine by me. I was willing to compromise so I could get to the technical details. So universal became uniform and document, document became a resource. The, uh, the story from 1992, a bit um, before we all actually got online, I mean now with we all people who had um, uh, other uh, operating systems and or other computers, so people outside of next computer community. Um, the, <clears throat> the next quote, what I have here, it's um, from uh, um, a bit uh, later. It's already when um, people started to have their addresses, people started to have their websites, and people started to think what to do with this address, how to take care um, about it. Uh, how to make it last uh, forever, or as uh, this quote here says, um, the suggestions of the, again, of the Tim Berners-Lee, it is the duty of the webmaster to allocate uh, your eyes, which you will be able to stand by in two years, in 20 years, in 200 years. This needs, though, the organization and commitment. Um, will you, <laughs> those uh, who, um, uh, know me, know my personal commitment to the um, URLs, uh, to the address of the web page, and that uh, I would um, <clears throat> never agree to show a work in the physical space uh, with a full screen in kiosk mode, you know, with the URL not visible, as well as uh, 
I refuse to show um, web pages uh, um, as uh, video files. Uh, just, uh, yeah, because for me it is important that there are um, things that are happening online, that they happen in real time. And that, of course, that uh, location bar is visible. Um, and that, uh, because I believe that the uh, main thing uh, in net art and in general in our communication and our existence online, they happen in this particular line. And I mentioned now this uh, commitment also to say that, in fact, it's a lot of work. You need organization, you need commitment. Uh, you um, have to, or if you decided that uh, um, you are serious about the letters that appear here, uh, you have to um, look, constantly update your files, you have to be um, also um, pay attention to their uh, changes uh, that are, that are happening in uh, uh, protocols and conventions, uh, and um, also you just you know you just have to be a webmaster and take care that there are no broken links in your works um, that uh, <clears throat> go into the because others maybe are not taking care about their locations. There, so it is in fact uh, what you can see um, in this um, very old quote. It is. Um, it um, reminds us that quite early it was noticed the importance of this uh, location, and at the same time that it will be a lot of work to take care about these locations, technically and conceptually. But I also want to say that uh, from the very beginning of the web, um, the uh, IT companies and uh, providers. Um, the <laughs> giants and those people who provide the services and spaces and uh, sort of try to uh, coordinate um, users online and to show to them what they are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Um, and also the browsers and search engines. So everybody, they are quite critical about um, the visibility of the location bar. There is a lot of effort uh, constantly and for many years almost forever is made to uh, to <clears throat> uh, move the uh, users, so to say, ordinary users away from the URL, to hide it, to maybe make it completely invisible, or to make it so ununderstandable that you would really think that it's not your business. You don't have to understand what is it, what's happening in this line. I am in the... I would like to show now a short video um, to you. Um, it was I made it in 2014, and it was in 2015, and it was um, the moment. Uh, then uh, um, it was the moment when uh, um, Chrome on uh, Android uh, decided that uh, actually the own maybe people should see the um, URL, but um, only the domain name. The everything else, subdomains or the files, the paths, some to some uh, pages, they are not important. Um, I and I made a small. I called it documentary. That is called the vanishing part, and it is just. One minute is it? It is a screencast from my phone.
This is something else here. Um, so it was uh, uh, it was not some uh, uh, Photoshop or compositing that was happening in this uh, uh, video. The things were disappearing, like so nicely flying away from the names, uh, from the from the locations, uh, uh, because uh, the browser wanted it to be like this, and also to uh, get us acquainted to the idea that uh, it is uh, maybe if, if there is something important and it, it is a domain name that is important. The, <clears throat> it is 2015 and you know that things didn't become uh, <clears throat> any better and uh, all the time comes back this idea that how to they try very different uh, strategies of how to hide this information that is in location but um, away uh, from uh, from ordinary users. Uh, if you are following now my uh, file, um, I tried to recall here um, the line of the URLs where I did host at my very first projects. The services don't exist. And for example, this one that was started by Alexei Shulgin in 1995, also it is not uh, on uh, archive.org, unfortunately. But you can see here this uh, signs of time, the history that it's still Soviet Union and uh, um, that it is Moscow State University and probably it's computer science department and their uh, machine that was called Sunside. Um, I remember this, uh, you know, this um, <clears throat> that it was a big deal actually to um, at that moment, and they talk about 1995, to where to put your files uh, to put where to upload them online there were not so many choices but still there were some and what name you should use how to um, how to appear online and there was this nice tilde if you remember uh, maybe some of you that was in front of the name uh, of the person uh, after the name of the server and uh, it then meant that this is a user on this machine. The Tilde uh, Club is uh, the service that tries uh, to um, remind people of that days they use uh, this Tilde yeah, as a sign for the user, but for the user who understands what she or he is doing, who can file, who knows what the file transfer protocol is and can put files on the server. Her Self. Um, here is another, and I put here the address, my first address on the design room uh, service um, in Russia. And you see here is uh, there is no tilde here. And this is an, uh, I think, a <clears throat> great story about the past because um, I became employed by this company in 19. 97 and uh, I was offered some money I was op uh, I was offered a computer and one of the things that was uh, also sort of not in the counter contract but a bonus a special thing was that I can keep my files on the server without tilde so I will not be the user but I will be some I don't know it's almost like having your own domain to make uh, to have a folder without them. Uh, Tilde. But these are just some um, memories from the past and to mention that it was, uh, uh, why was it important tilde or not tilde? Because people did really look at this um, location bar. They looked what is written there and uh, this is how they navigate and uh, this is how they could make some um, conclusions and um, some, I don't, I don't know, judgments and so on. I put here also the links to the and great projects uh, of uh, Heath Bunting from the from mid nineties that uh, um, were all about uh, uh, attracting or directing or so channeling attention of people to the location. And this one um, is um, such a 
um, I don't know, elegant and simple work that uh, he was going in the city and uh, putting this, uh, uh, making this uh, drawing um, in the streets with this address. And people would come home and uh, write this URL and they would come to this page and what they would have to do is to um, answer to the questions and to give information where have they seen it, how it happened that they came to this page. So it's, I think, an amazing piece of uh, street art um, and net art at the same time. So the wonderful circle of um, things. Um, and of course, README, uh, that is on the rational org as well, where you can, it's uh, it was a great uh, critique about uh, internet uh, World Wide Web of 1996, and it's still a very interesting um, piece to follow and to see what is uh, what is every word dot com um, in uh, today's uh, uh, landscape. So <clears throat> uh, there's some. Uh, I will leave here the links to the artists to so the great projects that do a play in a very interesting way with urls but i also want to tell to you that uh, it is not only about the artists uh, who would be who were very conscious about uh, location bar of the browser in the mid 90s uh, it was um, the just the thing to do you know that a lot of um, uh, time and a big part of my uh, life is happening in GeoCities archive and of course um, may um, there uh, they, they have people who were on GeoCities they have only this location yeah the geocities.com but they could uh, later they were supposed to express themselves with vanity profile but in the very beginning this was neighborhoods yeah this was a uh, like you can see here, it was a neighborhood and then there was a suburb and the name of the house. And uh, um, as my interviews with the users show, they, GeoCities users show, they were very conscious about um, choosing this neighborhood, thinking about what uh, uh, suburb should it be. And uh, but now think, please, it, you could only actually you will choose in the folder. You were choosing one folder inside another folder and these neighborhoods they were not affecting the, your page at all they only could be visible here in the location bar of the browser but this location was uh, important yet yeah, this uh, uh, these words here they could uh, tell um, a lot i also chose chose this uh, screenshot to be now on your screen that uh, it is not so spectacular and maybe not at all GeoCities style, um, but uh, it is also another, it brings me to another important part of what I wanted to talk with you about. It uh, um, says um, it's uh, about treating the um, location bar as, um, as, uh, as your command line. Yeah? So here is the user from Heartland Flats, 4760. He didn't want to provide links here, but suggested to visitors of the page to be a bit uh, more active and to make them themselves. Put a slash after the address of this website, followed by one dot JPEG, then press enter and you will view the first page. Continue by changing the number of the pictures to two um, and so on and so on. Yeah. So, and this is how you will be able to see these pictures. Just a bit, uh, you know, one more step, maybe very unnecessary step. It's easier to make a link, but he wanted to make it like this. Is it a way to maybe to hide um, some content from somebody who doesn't, who would never understand how to type something in location bar? Is it just a, so to say, medium specific joke? If it's maybe the, maybe it's a net artist who was uh, uh, on GeoCities and uh, uh, then went to somewhere else, we don't know. But this is, I think, a precious. I think it's a precious example 
of a uh, person who makes something online and thinks not only about the in-window, but also things that are happening in the location bar. So it's part of your environment. It's a thing you control and you offer to control it to the others. And uh, I always uh, yeah, like to repeat this wisdom that is uh, not mine. Uh, I got it from uh, Dragon. I don't know where he got it from. Maybe it's his wisdom. I had to ask him before this lecture. But that's the, the words are that the location bar of the browser is maybe our last command line. Um, the line where you can, you know, you can give comments to the browser. You can talk with this corner. You can, you can talk to Google. You can talk to Amazon. You can talk with Apple like this or with uh, whoever. There, there you, because when you type you, uh, the address, yeah, you are given a command and you type and typing is also like a command line interface. Yeah. Something what you have to know, you have to understand how it works. Um, and, um, and, you know, I can now uh, go to the work hosted that uh, I made uh, that was commissioned by Arbite for this show. And again, I would like to thank them for this and for agreeing to um, to host such a complicated um, uh, piece, Don't, not a really gallery friendly piece in their gallery. So as you know, the work is um, um, consists of 70 frames. It's an animation that is made of 70 frames and each of these 70 frames is hosted on uh, different servers. To see the um, to see the animation, I ask uh, people to um, open the tabs one after another and then to close to close this one and uh, to uh, to enjoy the animation the yeah here all this I think the what you could um, see these are not an, uh, this uh, URLs are like, quite different. Yeah, these are not links. They're really addresses that go to the they go to the files in the buckets. These are not friendly. Um, they, these are not user friendly lines. These are um, quite um, strange. Um, <clears throat> Uh, com combination uh, of uh, um, letters as if they are not yeah, made for people and they are actually not made for people. I will um, not start this uh, uh, animation now or maybe just for the um, just an, as an experiment I will uh, make an animation of uh, without really following um, without opening all 70 phrases and be, be, without closing without following my own instruction and without closing this one. So this is the how the animation should work and how I should start to swim on your um, <clears throat> on your screen if I would do everything right. The <clears throat> you um, to put, uh, I went to a lot of services and um, did uh, put uh, uh, files there. I always had a frame of the um, that was the size of full HD, um, and services were quite um, unfriendly on, and rude. One can say to my files, it was uh, they were making them small. Um, they were renaming them to JPEG, my PNGs, for example, to JPEGs or making or 
making some compressing them in a strange way or also resizing also resizing the proportions for example and this is how the life in buckets is these are not folders there's no, you are not control anything there they just i don't know there is completely another logic that you don't even have to know and understand but when i would upload upload something to the system and now i want to make this example for you for example one of the frames um, i did put it on the um i did put it on the on google maps yeah uh, of the swimming the swimming pool where i was um, um swimming and the, the project was recorded so there is um I'm happy now that one of the frames is now stands for the Leo Fett uh, butts. This is a swimming pool on um, Google Maps. Okay, but here it is a page. Now I have to take out my mm, my uh, file out of it. Let's see. I can here it is for example um, easy. I can um, oh, but the image is really too small. They say why it is small like this because they wanted to be like this because uh, it was there in preview. But then I see that it is in this uh, LH5 bucket and uh, this I will never understand. But here is something maybe that it makes sense. It is left for the person um, or by a real person was calculated. Okay, then I try to make it here how I wanted it to be. And also then there should be exact height and it would be and it would be a 1080. Yeah, and here is my picture in full HD. Uh, maybe somebody who is uh, maybe some programmer would is here watching here is laughing about me but uh, i was uh, extremely i was really extremely happy that i could achieve it you know i felt like a, i felt like a hacker i had i felt like a programmer uh, and uh, that i can control at least something in this world and here is another example it's maybe even more funny so there is i created a presentation on uh, Penzo.com, and it means that the file was uh, <clears throat> landed up in Amazon's uh, cloud in S, uh, famous S3 cloud inside there in the market. And I see there that it is called big. Yeah, it's big, but in fact, it's quite, uh, the picture is quite small. It's 800 to 600, but I need it to be full HD or at least closer to full HD that it all starts to work. Okay, it says this big and then, uh, and that it can, can it be that it's uh, there things bigger than big? And uh, I said huge and here it is my file in, uh, uh, in uh, full HD. You know, then uh, uh, I don't know, maybe there is something uh, huger than huge, but there were no, no other words. Just then I, I write uh, small, I tried small, but nothing was there. And then I said tiny. And here it is, it, and it is really tiny. And it's uh, some, yeah, some thumbnail, 58 to 44. And uh, yeah, and I just needed to take this uh, full HD extract, full HD file uh, out of this uh, bucket. And uh, um, here it is. But uh, I also wanted to share now with this, uh, um, with you, this uh, conversation I could have uh, with um, Amazon's cloud and I was sort of inside and it was my command line and I could control something. It reminded me, by the way, about the uh, case that was quite um, uh, famous and it was uh, uh, in all mass media. Uh, some years ago, uh, somebody um, hacked, as the title says, man hacks, oops, 
<clears throat> Manhex airline computer system to book free business class flights worth 80,000. And this is a headline and everybody says uh, that he hacked, but in fact, what actually happened, it is reported that he canceled the flights to get his money back, but managed to manipulate the URL so that the tickets were still valid. So probably he made something like I just made with the buckets uh, to um, <clears throat> here, go, went to another folder and saw some codes that were um, reasonable, um, useful for him. And this is, of course, also the reason why uh, companies, uh, providers, uh, browsers, why they try to hide uh, URL from us, because it is actually a common line. Um, the, <clears throat> the works that I would make uh, with the um, URLs, uh, they I somehow they became now for me a part of the um, series that I maybe also retrospectively, no, I call it now network portraits because usually these would be self-portraits, but also I see them as portraits of networks, uh, of network itself. And um, I say now retrospectively because uh, I um, did um, also include in uh, this uh, uh, series the works that was made that works that were made long time ago and one one of them Agatha appears you know and uh, Agatha appears I made it in 1997 and uh, with only one intention in fact to make a work that could only exist inside the web browser and that wouldn't work if your uh, computer is offline uh, so, but how to make something that uh, um, that uh, it doesn't work uh, offline? You have to distribute it for di for different servers. This is how I skipped a lot of uh, pages now, and this is how Agata, the protagonist of this page, how she started to travel through the internet. Such as it's a culmination moment of this project, and uh, here. She stays uh, in the screen, but only um, location is changing. I should say that the work was um, <clears throat> uh, restored uh, in uh, uh, 2008, so 11 year, years later after it was made. And the line of people, of URLs, uh, this chain of friends um, who were, whom was Agatha, where Agatha was, uh, whom Agatha was visiting, it's already of 2008. There were other, partly there were other people and other services there that didn't exist anymore. But at this moment, look, it's already 2020 and uh, all <clears throat> the people who host uh, the frame of Agatha, they still uh, do it. And it's very seldom that I have to update it. Um, Agatha was also the, <clears throat> such an experience for me at that moment that I realized, oh, there is a lot of attention then uh, to the work and recognition that it is made for online. So it was described, uh, it was mentioned uh, here and there. And then uh, um, MoMA wanted uh, to have it for their website, but uh, they wanted to have it uh, without showing the location bar of the browser and because uh, yeah because they because then it would look as if it is um, it would have looked as if it is doesn't belong to them but if it is in collection it should have the url url of the museum so this is how really this stuff times started of uh, um, <clears throat> me fighting with the world around and explaining that there is nothing more beautiful in this world online than URLs. And uh, um, no one is allowed to open my projects in pop-up window. Um, no iframes. Uh, so only uh, original 
URLs. Uh, to at that moment, and it's now it's already 99, to sort of um, explain to the world uh, how others do it, what is what is important about the um, location bar. I made an exhibition on Art Teleportatia Gallery <coughs> that in fact is a more more of an essay as an exhibition and it collects a lot of examples from uh, uh, 1999 till i think 2003 then i stopped to update it of the projects and um, works that deal um, in a, a conscious or provocative or very special or funny way with location bars of the browser. And uh, I can only recommend it maybe to visit it. Uh, many things don't exist. And at that time I made the screenshots of location bar of location bars as a, I don't know, as a gimmick, but at this moment one can say that for many works it is the only, um, it's the only, this is the, the, the only thing that is left of them. Um, the, <clears throat> this uh, idea is to, to have your content uh, uh, distributed, to be somewhere else, to be not on the, on the one server, so to be able that nobody is uh, able to watch your work with the computer offline. It also went through some other uh, projects um, and um, I want to, in this uh, relation, I would also want not to mention only one uh, my projects, but for example, there is a great work of uh, um, Ellie Harrison, which is called Greed. Uh, and uh, she, in 2000, she did put, um, she made um, a lot of pictures of yourself, of herself for, uh, for uh, quite some time where she is eating, or them eating fast food somewhere, eating, eating, eating. So it was about greed, about um, a lot of uh, things uh, um, that um, are um, about um, data, organizing data, about also uh, analyzing yourself. And interestingly, she, when she wanted to document this uh, project, all these 33 files, she did put them all on the uh, different hosting services. But uh, all these hosting services, they don't exist anymore. And now it is uh, on her computer, but uh, there, um, uh, the um, um, addresses of these services that don't, that don't exist anymore, they are in the title. They are in the title of the documents. I think when you can't see my mouse over, unfortunately, but you could uh, if you follow this project together. This is, uh, you know, it is another um, a trouble or challenge uh, that on one hand you want to be things everywhere you want them to be distributed but then this uh, fun is um, very fast over and you can see it with Ellen's project or for example this the same happened with one of the episodes of um, zombie and mommy which is zombie and mommy have to escape and uh, um, from zombie and mommy series and uh, we also uh, decided we wanted that people go through different uh, follow zombie and the mummy through very different um, through through the chain of uh, online hosting services, and uh, um, sort of it had to be a, an escape from maybe the mainstream internet or just the journey from the places we don't. Uh, um, control, but uh, yeah, now this uh, line is um, not possible even to recreate. There, there is um, <clears throat> GeoCities uh, on um, um, web archive, but then it's over. You don't go any further. So it means that uh, actually for people were not able to come back to conclude this uh, circle and never came back or for a long time didn't come, could, couldn't have, couldn't, uh, didn't have a chance to come back to this page and uh, enjoy um, the comic uh, itself. And uh, that's also why I did put it now um, here on this page as a, a little um, 
surprise and uh, thank you to people who um, who are watching me right now and maybe saving content from this file. Um, just uh, now the, <clears throat> the last uh, links that I have here, um, there is a, um, a work um, summer that maybe the um, could be seen as really my manifest and uh, my confession to the of my love to the location bar uh, in 2013 I asked um, a lot of um, friends uh, of mine I'd say a lot it was um, I had um, to host a frame of my um, to host one frame of one, my animation um, almost everybody said yes but uh, also it was more people than I expected that's why it is not just a loop it is a loop that is um, uh, going it, that is forking it's also a forking path um, so to say because I had to there are 26 people who are hosting 18 frames in the at this moment and uh, again I would like to use this chance to say thank to all of them that they don't forget uh, my folder then they move to other ser uh, servers and uh, that they make updates I constantly ask them to make it's uh, precious and it's uh, as you can imagine very different experience uh, as uh, with uh, if you compare it with my news book hosted hosted is uh, the services are knocking my files away uh, constantly and um, they don't um, they uh, they remove the um, resize or they introduce passwords or put some uh, some layers over it all the time and uh, i have to find other ways or i have to upload something again so it's much more work than summer but it is uh, it is um, it is no fun yeah, I am really uploading and uh, uh, fighting with these buckets. And in this case, it's uh, always also the, uh, you know, the reason to write, to say hello to a person who is uh, hosting um, the frame. I have here, I, it was 2013, and I should say that uh, earlier this year, Constant Dullard um, made um, his work that was called The Death of URL. And uh, uh, in fact, um, I would still say that it's uh, um, it was great that he made it because it was uh, I don't know why it is death. There is no death in it. It, it is a monument. It's uh, another also way to attract attention to people to please pay attention, to be excited, to be intrigued of what is happening there. But I also remember that I thought that uh, the words themselves, they really hurt me, the death of the URL, because they think that I never want uh, to die, I want URLs to live forever. And it was um, one of the reasons also for me to think about summer. Um, and um, you know, in general, I would like to say that um, <clears throat> the works that I do for the browser and this attention to um, URLs and other things that exist in the browser, the status bar, um, the title, the, the way scripts and uh, things work, they, uh, my, my works, uh, I hope that uh, if uh, my works they have some value and they have to be presented by pre preserved sorry by some um, institutions museums or galleries or enthusiasts it also means that to to be able to see them in the future you will have to preserve the browsers you will have to take care about the um, browsers so you will have to educate uh, future generations of uh, um, the um, I don't know, of uh, conservators, uh, of curators, uh, and uh, just general public about what the browser is and how it did function, if it doesn't function at all. Or maybe people who do produce, who now and develop the new browsers, maybe they will would uh, take an account that there is, for example, such a beautiful thing as uh, summer out there, and we shouldn't uh, hide... Uh, um, lo location bar of the browser because it will destroy this uh, charming work. 
So this is my hope. And uh, it may be, would be also the good end, but uh, let me please show also the um, another link, the best effort network uh, that uh, <clears throat> also the work that was remade for this show at Arbeit before it was a symbolic version, I was appearing and disappearing uh, on the, this carousel randomly. But uh, uh, now, uh, if you don't see me here, it means I'm somewhere else, on somebody else's computer. And uh, at this moment, I know that there are quite some uh, people looking at the, at the work. So maybe there you have to wait longer and you know in this uh, case for me it is uh, in fact uh, there more important is that there is nothing happens um, in the location bar um, there is a it's always just it says best effort network it's always it says that it's uh, something will happen because uh, um, it's uh, the network is doing its best to um, bring packets to where they were um, requested, but uh, there is uh, maybe no guarantee in this. You can see my shadow there appearing. I don't know where I am now, but of course I can, can also, there is a way for me to um, check it if I go to best effort network and see the queue. Yeah. I would see that there are uh, seven people who were there at the moment waiting for me to arrive. Maybe some of you is uh, um, lucky right now. <clears throat> the another work that uh, um, was uh, um, is a part of Network Portraits uh, made in 2018. Uh, in this case for uh, it was not only the uh, web but uh, different protocols not only http but it's uh, um, tor um, so it's um, onion it's um, um, uh, it's that p2p protocol and uh, in this case i really wanted to make uh, people to uh, to make some effort to not only to type the address in the url but you know also to just uh, to install other browsers uh, and then uh, make some movements on the desktop and put these browsers together and then to be um, able um, to see what I expect uh, you to see. I will not be able to make it for you on uh, this computer, uh, but uh, thanks to Ed Summer who made it and recorded it on, on his, uh, you can see how it would be if you arranged everything perfectly and that you go to a very, different locations on the web, not just locations in the browser, but to different uh, protocols on the internet. So I think I would uh, finish at this moment. And uh, I really hope that I was uh, online all the time. And, uh, and if there are questions, I'm absolutely happy to answer. Yeah, thank you, Olia. There's actually been quite a lot of questions on the chat on YouTube, so I'm just going to head to those now. Um, okay, we'll start with a question by Laura Angelova. Uh, so she asked, when archiving NetArp, like hosted, how relevant is it to capture contemporary users' interaction with these sites and how can this be done to contextualize the work in future reactivation? Mm -hmm. Well, this is uh, a beautiful question and uh, I myself uh, uh, then thinking about how to archive it or preserve it, um, I didn't think yet about um, uh, interaction of the person. I think that's uh, of a particular person. Yeah, because I I would say that at this moment for me, their um, task is to create some uh, 
um, sustainable um, chains of this uh, 70 files that um, it is um, and to work with the services that would give a chance to a better than me uh, institution to maybe preserve it and then to give it to people to play around but it's um, really uh, of course, uh, you know, I know how I go through this uh, loop of hosted, uh, but uh, others also I know that they make uh, also fun of it and uh, skip uh, every second frame or go back and forward so you can make funny animations and then it is, uh, yeah, it's also of course part of the work and uh, uh, I can't just, <laughs> I can't uh, record uh, everything. I just can be happy that it exists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've got another question here from Christopher McInnes. So he said, <clears throat> I'd like to hear more about what Olia considers to be the wider significance of the obscuring or obfuscation of the location bar and URLs. Uh, it's a very esoteric, very specific concern, but it has a much wider implication as to how our relationship to technology is managed, um, especially in terms of how we orient ourselves within internet space. So maybe if you can kind of expand on, mm -hmm. on that, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I <clears throat> mentioned, um, there are um, reasons, uh, or uh, let's say, for all these 20, 25 years, that uh, is, a, yeah, 25 years, it's a quarter of the century that I'm um, online, um, the, there is a there are different steps made to um, um, this to alienate uh, uh, computer users from computers. This is clear, but one of these uh, um, surfaces where it happens is, of course, the location bar of the of the browser. And so many times it was uh, um, presented to us, with us, I mean, uh, online um, users, uh, that uh, or if it would not exist, it would be much safer. The web would be much safer. You would be, um, uh, there would be no phishing site, well, though it's completely, uh, the, the opposite uh, is uh, true or there are such things that uh, that happened with the um, airlines uh, this uh, hack uh, this would not happen or just uh, yeah you are you don't have to take care about this miserable technical details yeah this is what we hear all the time and um, <clears throat> yeah the, the idea is uh, um, in general that you have to uh, you do, you are not uh, you should not be um, go where um, developers go so that's supposed to be uh, for the competent uh, for the for those who own own these environments um, but historically it happened that uh, yeah not on purpose that it was there it was visible. Yeah. And um, it's uh, important to keep it visible as um, um, far, uh, as um, long as possible, I think, and also to be uh, to, to make such a crazy thing as I just made, uh, trying to sort of edit in my photo in the location bar, and uh, to uh, to be I don't know to uh, to have fun with this. Yeah. Um, to uh, yeah, to be to be excited about this. I just uh, when I was telling this, I recall that um, students, uh, my students, they really don't uh, want to go into it. They don't understand why do I um, want them to put uh, the thing with FTP on the server and then to send to me the exact address of the file. Um, because, yeah, well, can I maybe just uh, Dropbox or I will put it on Instagram or whatever. There are better, easier things to do, but I try to insist on, on it. And then I also see, oh, my God, there is such a surprise and joy in the um, uh, eyes of the 
um, young person who feels like really that now empowered. Yeah, I understand. I put this file on the server and now it is, <laughs> I see this file in the location bar. And uh, all this, you can say it's ch uh, childish and doesn't bring us any further in anything, but it is, uh, you know, at least it is at least something. It is uh, some uh, competence. It is some, um, uh, control over the environment on a very primitive level, but we really don't have uh, um, a lot left. What we can do, what we can we can see, and this is also what I wrote in the description of the uh, hosted that also being able to control what tab I want to open and what to close. It's also <laughs> something that uh, maybe uh, tomorrow you will not be able to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Dragon said something quite interesting in response to a question that Jacob Bolton asked. So Jacob asked, I guess in a way we're seeing the address bar becoming more a way for servers to find and follow us via link tracking than for us to find the servers. And Dragon said, I guess without URLs being visible, it would be very hard to discuss this tracking process. And I think that's kind of what you're kind of talking about. You're talking about the visibility mm -hmm. of this. So what's the kind of, so Jacob also went on to ask, um, uh, how, how do you feel that this kind of changes the purpose and the politics of the space of the address bar? Mm. Uh, yeah, the, I, I don't think really I can uh, add something more with, but um, in relation to this, of course, you know that, uh, um, all these um, address bars, they sort of belong to Google or maybe if it has a competitor search engine. But I don't think that uh, uh, Bing had a lot to say there or others. Uh, their idea is that the, the only input uh, field is a search field yeah, where you can still type something. And then uh, it is uh, what you... Uh, what comes to you when you search for something, it is completely different than when you give the address. Yeah, this uh, unified or universal um, resource uh, um, locator, because it is, uh, it really exists, a sort of effect. And search can be always manipulated and it can be whatever um, can be given to you. There is, um, yeah, the first it was, you know, it is also the politics are that uh, it's always, everything is uh, sold to you as uh, things are getting more convenient and uh, now you can concentrate on the beautiful things uh, as you said, finding friends or making your profile uh, more beautiful or enjoy IRL and we will uh, take care about location bar. And, uh, and this is a like alienation alienation and uh, once again alienation <laughs> mm -hmm. um we've got another question from someone called anna so she said how do you feel about constantly changing and updating the urls to preserve the artwork so in the case of hosted creating the squarespace website again for frame 23 and letting it expire mm -hmm. If it is about the if it is about the uh, the project hosted, um, then um, I feel uh, it is uh, it is just uh, you know work, and um, um, it is like being in conversation or no conversation with uh, uh, with um, just with the yeah computer. Mm -hmm. is it, it is a um, bucket. Um, I still, um, I also um, sometimes, uh, yeah, the project is quite young. It's only one month old, but already sometimes I was, uh, I did leave it um, unupdated. Um, and um, there were this, uh, maybe at this moment there are new ones. There were files that were missing. <clears throat> uh, so, I feel like I will I will have to how it is called I will have to I will lose in the end this is what I know with the with the hosted with this particular project because uh, there is something there more and more 
um, restrictions and um, uh, some uh, uh, how, how would say it just uh, things that happen that maybe completely have no reasons just they decided to have it like this because you know i wanted to have uh, in the beginning you also you can rebecca can remember when we discussed it i wanted that it is quite um, the animation is um, smooth yeah mm -hmm. i i will put uh, uh, the file of, of of the same size uh, to 70 servers and as soon as they are loaded it will work but uh, there are no 70 services uh, at this moment that uh, would leave my file in the size and uh, um, format that I uploaded it. Yeah, so it's not only uh, updating that I have to do now to keep it alive, but also I have to take care that they don't make my, don't, um, make, uh, my file smaller again because of some algorithm or I don't or to put some overlay over it and it's happening all the time but it's um yeah an almost anthropological i would say project i've seen a lot what i've never seen before you know yeah anna anna also sort of mentioned in her question um do you think that re-scripting your roots to the buckets by uploading the files again and again damages the integrity of the original work Mm -hmm. Um I am uh, this is uh, something what I am um, thinking about right now. <clears throat> uh you know some because um in the beginning I took a very challenging uh put files in the very challenging buckets uh with, that are not allowing hot linking and it's difficult to to fish your file again out of uh, there so and they have uh, more obscure also urls um but they are kicking me out <laughs> and uh, i already made some compromises and went to easier services yeah? but then it is it's i don't like this compromise i think um <clears throat> i uh, i will um <clears throat> i will try again to go inside uh, the challenging the, the world gardens so to say mm, uh, mm. world gardens or world buckets <laughs> mm -hmm. um can i join now yeah hey thank you it's nimrod here um i have a couple of questions um first of all is about the, the use of social media where you don't or apps in general when you don't have urls anymore um, and you said at the beginning that you don't want your work to be shown as a video. Um, so where, where does, you know, it seems like things are really going towards this non-URL experiences online. So how can these things be experienced? And the second one, I think, the second question kind of relates to the situation that we are in now, that the show is on at the gallery, um, an experienced streaming. So it's at the gallery online, and we experience that through streaming. So it's kind of, layers of streaming and onlineness that i think adds another layer to this whole experience this whole kind of layering yeah mm -hmm. so you want to comment me on this <laughs> i think it was it's very interesting when we first of all when we did the opening you said it was the first opening that you ever done online i think it works very well in that context uh with everything we're experiencing but um it's just whether you think that this is the right way to experience it in the in an exhibition context Mm -hmm. uh, I am, uh, um, how to say, I am very much uh, in, enjoying as an artist the situation that now um, there were so many people surfing with me together through the bed and we were uh, all online and uh, I always, uh, so some, somehow what I was asking people, what I was claiming uh, decades ago that uh, net art is to be experienced at home now it is uh, um, experienced at home um, at, the, at the same time uh, i think we now with this exhibition the gallery and me that we are also in a special situation not as uh, others who had to really to cancel because in the last days you you did build this <laughs> and it is also running yeah, so it's like a ghost 
exhibition and I really love to go online and to uh, look uh, to look at the works there alone at the um, gallery. And in this case, you saw the, uh, how they're shown in, in the gallery, for example, the host that there was a special, um, th there is a version of it. There is no, there is no user who opens the tab. This is, as they say now, artificial intelligence that is doing it. And this is a, that is a way for this to exist in the gallery and even without the audience. Yeah, but what you said, uh, your first questions about the things that, uh, that are done by the new generation of artists today, those who only, for example, would work on um, Instagram, for them, a uh, browser doesn't exist at all. Yeah, it's only make the picture the picture or I don't know some uh, other mechanisms or the, the app. Um, um, yeah, it is, uh, but uh, some resistance is of course needed also for the artists who are working with um, Instagram. And true, I truly believe that you can be on Instagram and can be uh, um, a net artist, but you should uh, then engage yourself more with the, with the app, so to say. So maybe this is the death of the URL that Constant Dullard was talking about. Hmm, I think he was talking about something else. <laughs> Um, we've got another question from Gretchen Andrew, who I think you've worked with before yeah. earlier. Um, she says, hi, can you talk more about the gap between things that are written or visible for humans or users and those that technology companies feel are not? So she's talking about the disappeared URL being a huge example of this. Mm -hmm. What can I say more about this? If I would say about, about the path and the uh, uh, vanishing path, this documentary, I was surprised when I saw it uh, for the first time because it was uh, mm, made in such a pleasing, aesthetical way, you know, that um, you would uh, somehow, I don't know, maybe you had to, what the idea was that you uh, look at it and you admire the effort of the developers to make this uh, um, vanishing um, file names in your browser, like the, as if I don't know, like really big uh, design effort and you would admire it and you would uh, forget that they exist. But there are some other, um, they're all the time, um, <clears throat> so this somehow this did not work. Um, and uh, in general, hiding URLs at this moment um, doesn't work. There are still technical reasons why they should exist. And plus to it, a lot of people bought uh, new top-level domains that they want to show up with. Yeah, There are so many words now that you can, um, uh, with which you can show off and be proud and uh, create some meanings. I should say that uh, uh, I find a lot of this uh, new top-level domains uh, um, not very exciting, and I myself, as a net artist, I would never register a dot uh, dot art domain. Yeah, uh, but uh, I am very thankful that such uh, things uh, exist because it uh, means that there are forces that would want um, that uh, location bars are still visible, that the addresses of the lines are still visible. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess I just have, I'm just looking on YouTube to see if there's any more questions. Okay. Um, so Gretchen also mentioned to maybe talk about other examples of things that technology companies do um, that are for users. Oh, sorry. I think, I think maybe this got cut a little bit. Um, I'll come back to that one. Um, so I guess I have a question about hosted um and kind of the way that the process is quite laborious so it requires a lot from the viewer if they want to access the work um so i guess i want to address this idea of labor with you and with online works in general so with hosted you're kind of 
you're situating the labor at the point of the viewer so you're making this often invisible labor kind of visible mm -hmm. um, and it kind of demands it demands a certain level of knowledge about how to work with the internet i guess um so why was it important for hosted to kind of to show this labor to yeah to not to be an automatic to make some effort to do uh, to make at least something and mm -hmm. i actually know that uh, um, one, um it's made uh, as a uh, already as convenient as possible there is a 70 urls and the next one is highlighted for you yeah so nice i was to the um, uh, audience of the project so this part is uh, there but still i wanted that people click um, it um, each uh, link themselves also was maybe to share uh, with me the to, to feel that it is was it was a lot of uh, that is these are a lot of files that is a lot of frames and uh, to to feel that you are go somewhere else all the time I think all this adds to this and as I said to yeah to to make some more additional clicks maybe it sounds like um, a bit strange but uh, there is uh, from the each uh, app or uh, product that we are dealing with, it re it reduces the amount of uh, of actions you have to make to achieve some something, um, and this is like a, I think it's even a paranoia already. Yeah, so you uh, <clears throat> and in the end, it's uh, what we have that uh, each app is just. Uh, doing something that only demands one click or maybe not at all yeah so there is in general the, the this idea that it could be completely another condensation but the situation is that you don't have to do anything at all yeah though i think that uh, we have to change the paradigm and uh, the products uh, uh, the um, interface designs and uh, general new media product uh, um, developers and companies uh, uh, should finally rethink and uh, the the general paradigm, the direction how products are developing, and maybe to not maybe, but uh, I would say to deliver products that demand the learning curve, to deliver products that uh, should make uh, one than just more things just you know could be as a rule like we have this for um for laws of robotics yeah what robots are allowed and what not allowed to do the same could be for the apps so there you have to learn it <laughs> you have it the app has to make more than one thing and there should be always left gaps for person to um enter information herself or there should be something missing that you are that, that can come only from you yeah there's a it's not maybe so much connected to our conversation now but uh, it is uh, connected to the disappearing urls because everything sort of disappears mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay well thank you so much this has been a really great chat and i'd also actually just like to mention thank you to arts council for sponsoring for funding the show with you as well um and thank you to everybody who's watched and who's asked a question and thank you to you Olia. yeah i also would like to thank everybody who was as far as i understand on youtube now and uh, talking in um, uh, comments right yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad we, ma we managed to be in between different services <laughs> yeah thank you very much okay. thank you Nimur. thank you rebecca thank you everybody Bye-bye. Good day. Bye. Bye.